The next thing to look at is failed submissions. So essentially, this is someone going through the form, entering all the data, then clicking the submit button, but not successfully completing. Something's happened. And now this is always very important because these are kind of your low hanging fruit. These are people who spent time and energy entering data, entering information into your form or checkout. They want to give you their money. They want to give you their details, but they can't because there's a problem with your form and checkout. Looking like a baddie, I show up and make them stop. Wanna know my name so badly, cause I run this whole block. Flip my hair, move my head, show the world I'm royalty. When I walk by, they be taking bows, cause they know I'm the queen, yeah. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to today's talk, which as you can see from the title slide, is all about optimizing forms. More specifically, how you use data to optimize forms and which metrics you need to look at. But before I start in earnest, I'd just like to ask a quick question on anyone there. So I know you can't see me, but if you're out there, uh, could you please put your hand up if you enjoy filling out forms? Okay, I'll take a second. I'm just looking through my webcam so I can see you all and I can see that one, yeah, yeah one, you over there, one person's put the hand up out of all, all of you. So not surprising, as an aside, whenever I ask this question face to face, there's usually one strange weirdo who enjoys filling out forms. But for the rest of us, filling out forms tends to be a chore, uh, an issue. Um, and that's probably because we fill out forms like this beauty here, you know, dozens of form fields with a nice juicy capture, which we all enjoy at the bottom. Or perhaps a form like this, which has a drop down menu with 30 to 40 options for your title. I mean, who's going to go through there unless you're a wing commander and really proud of it? No one bothers with that. It's just a pain. So we can look at the forms I've just looked at and say, okay, they're, they're useless. They're, they're, they're bad forms, but obviously that's still subjective. So how do we know uh, if a form is bad and what's bad about it. And of course, the answer to that is through data, uh, specifically form analytics data where you can analyze uh, individual form elements like form questions, form fields, form buttons, uh, get into the weeds and really understand uh, what the issues are. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today is which metrics are the ones we want to look at, what's important, how do we analyze them to find out where our problem fields are. Uh, but you may be thinking at this moment in time, you know, well, why listen to this guy? Um, well, I'm MD of Zico Analytics. We're a form analytics platform. We've been going for 10 years or so. So we've been optimizing forms using data for 10, 10 or more years. And, uh, you know, we've seen pretty much every issue you can see on a form, uh, but we've also quantified that using data. So therefore, we've got a lot of experience on forms. Uh, and so hopefully, when I share the analytics that we look at, uh, if you follow that, you can't go too far wrong when you're trying to identify UX issues on your forms. So first up, uh, I'll be looking at the basics, so that the building blocks, which are the simple, easy metrics that get you started and, and point you in the right direction where you uh, to look at, uh, at your form fields. And there's sort of four of those, which I'll, I'll take you through. The first one of those is based around abandonment. And what I mean here is, okay, what is the last thing that the user interacted with on your form before jumping away and leaving and never coming back? Now, when you look at abandonment, there's probably two things you need to look at. First is sheer volume, so uh, abandonment count. So if we look on this, this table here, we've got, uh, you know, it's a dummy data, but you've got field A, B, C, D, and then you've got across here, you have abandonment count. So that's what you'd look at in terms of sheer volume. So if you were just to look at that here, uh, you can see that field A has 600. Uh, and obviously the, the, the reason you look at the highest volume is because that's the biggest potential for improvement. The bigger <clears throat> improvement you get on it, the bigger the return on investment you will have because you'll reduce your total abandonments by uh, a large amount. Now, having said that, it's not the be all and end all. It's also very important to look at the abandonment rate as well. And the abandonment rate is essentially the percentage of people who interact with a particular field who abandon on it. Um, now, why is that important? It's important because not everyone uh, interacts with every single field uh, for reasons I'll come on to in a moment. Um, but as an example here, 
you know, if you're looking at these these fields and you just looked at abandonment, can you say, I want to look at abandonment, I want to look at field label A. However, if we look at field D, we can see that although it has less than half the amount of abandonments than field A, it has an abandonment rate of 45%, by far the largest. So you certainly want to look at this as well, because there's potentially an issue with this field that's dropping out, causing people to drop out uh, at a higher rate than other fields. So why, why is abandonment rate important as well, as I, I kind of touched on before? There's a couple of reasons why um, you also want to look at that. The, the first one is conditional questions. Uh, so as you'll see in, in this uh, video here, um, not everyone sees every question. Sometimes some questions on your forms are only shown to people who, who go down a certain pathway. So therefore not everyone sees it. So it's really important to look at relative measures like the percentage as well. And the second one is probably pertains to pretty much every form. It's uh, all about um, the, the dynamics of a form. Obviously people can only abandon a form once. And so if people drop out near the top of the form, uh, they obviously can't, they won't make it to the bottom. So therefore there's no abandonments at the bottom. So naturally uh, a field that's later on in the form will have a lower volume of, of dropouts. However, it doesn't mean it's a good field. You need to look at the relative measure like percentage of people dropping out. So the abandonment rate as well. And it's why abandonment rate is so important to look at um, as well as the volume. So. This is the first metric, if I move on to the second one, uh, is all about error messages. So which errors are triggering and when? So you need to make sure your analytics is set up to show you uh, which error messages are showing. And in fairly simple reason, uh, error messages are an indication of friction, something's gone wrong. So if you know which ones are triggering the most, you can see exactly where on your form people are uh, struggling with. Just as an aside, this obviously is an example of an error message. It's a particularly bad one, but I'm not going to go into that. We can do a whole session on you know effectiveness and, and uh, rules to, to write good error messages. But we'll just focus on, on data for the moment. So obviously, rule of thumb, the more the error message occurs, the, more, the bigger a problem it is. Having said that, um, you need to be a little bit careful because not all error messages are correlated with abandonment. You need to check this as well. Uh, and just to give you an example, we've got a Zuko data screen here of custom events, which are pretty much virtually all error messages. You can see which ones trigger the most. Uh, so if we look at this, <coughs> this one here, we can see that the error message that triggers the most is this one. Please select the sign agreement tick box. So it's a tick box. And you can see this occurs more than any other error message that's on here. However, if we then segment this and look at abandoned sessions only, which is the orange bar only, we can see that actually there's other error messages that are more important than two ones related to card number. So you can see that actually it's the card number error messages that are more important because they're the ones related to abandonment. Whereas a tick box is relatively simple. People often miss it, get an error message, just go back and tick the box. So it's less of an issue. So always make sure you're checking this as well when you're looking at your error message data. The uh, next one I'd like to, to talk about essentially is field returns or corrections. Now, what I mean here is when someone enters information into a field, moves on, comes back later to make a change. Now, generally driven by an error message, but not always uh, as well. And so the rule of thumb here is obviously that the higher the level of field returns, the more problematic a field uh, a question is. Although, again, when I come into a more advanced analytics, I'd want you to look at that and, and, and also do additional segmentation to be, to be truly clear. This is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. Every week we share interviews with and conference sessions by our favorite conversion rate optimizers from around the world. So if you like this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing. It helps us a bunch. Now back to the episode. And then the final uh, metric to look at is time spent. So how long are people spending answering each particular question. And again, as a starting point, your rule of thumb is the longer people are taking, the more problematic a particular field is. However, you do need to be careful. I had a very simple example. Um, we have here uh, an application form with two questions. First question is a, my simple name question. The second question is a 1000 word essay question. So naturally you would expect the second question to take longer. 
So you can't necessarily read into the fact that the, the a fit, on average, a field takes longer to complete uh, as being uh, a super point of friction. Having said that, I'm going to come on to more advanced techniques, which allow you to break that out and work out uh, it, what's important. Um, having said that, we will move on to those now. So we're going to look at the more advanced level techniques. <clears throat> so three things to take you through here. The first one is about segmenting, uh, segmenting your data by audience. Very specifically, I'm talking about segmenting your data between those who complete your form and those who abandon the form at some point, because it's this difference in behavior which will often give you the biggest insights and the insights that are related to people dropping out, which allows you to create the hypotheses to test and improve your form. Um, as an example here, we've got some, some uh, sample data again. So we have our fields down the left, E, F, G, and H, and then we have data on the right related to percentage of sessions returned. So it's a field return or a correction and then how long people are spending in each of these fields here. Now, if we were just to look at this as a, an average without segmentation, you'd probably see uh, field E as the biggest issue because what you'd be looking at is you'd say, okay, it's about a 55% uh, return rate. So this is the biggest issue, we need to look at that. However, when you segment that data out between abandoners and, compl and completers, the picture changes. And so what I would look at there is instead look at field G, because what I can see for field G is that in 25% of sessions where people abandon, they have to come back to make a correction. Whereas for successful completions, that figure is only 17%. So there's an 8% difference there, which is a big difference. And it's these differences you're looking at, because what it's telling you is that actually Abandoners come back to field G at a much higher rate than those who complete, and this is related to abandonment. So it allows you to home in and where your potential issues are. And you'll also see a similar pattern if we just look at time spent. So we can see here that people who complete field G but ultimately abandon it are spending 16 seconds on it, where it's about 10 seconds for completers. So again, big difference. It's a big key indicator that you'd probably want to look at this form where there's a big difference between abandoners and completers and the percentage you can return are much higher when they abandon. So this allows you to home in on where your potential issues are and start to develop hypotheses. The next thing to look at is failed submissions. So essentially this is someone going through the form, entering all the data, then clicking the submit button, but not successfully completing. Something's happened. And now this is always very important because these are kind of your low hanging fruit. These are people who spent time and energy entering data, entering information into your form or checkout. They want to give you their money. They want to give you their details, but they can't because there's a problem with your form and checkout. So you're losing free money. Money's been taken off the table. So always look up around failed submissions to see what's going on there. So how do you do that? Well, essentially what you need to do is look at your analytics and kind of see the behavior flows from the submit button. So I'll show you an example here. This is a behavior flow data um, chart. And what it shows is kind of what happens after the submit button. Now it's important to segment the data as always. Uh, in this case, and, and generally what we do is we will segment it to only look at abandoners, people who don't complete the form, because that's where you get the information that's related to the insights that you need. So what's happening here, we can see uh, that people, you know, on the left-hand side, it's showing that these abandoners are clicking the submit button. What do they do afterwards? On the right-hand side, we can see that 42% of them drop out straight away. Probably see a sea of red, a load of error messages go, oh no, I'm done, and drop straight out of there. But the really useful information comes uh, below that. So what you can see is what, uh, the, what people are doing. So what we can see here is that the set password field and the phone number field are the second biggest, second and third biggest ones. So these are big groups of people who are clicking submit. They're then jumping back to password or phone number, trying to fix it, but then they're subsequently abandoning. So again, this shows you, okay, this is where people are struggling. They're going back to password, they're going back to phone number, they're trying to fix it, they're failing, then they're dropping out. 
So this is probably my favorite uh, form of analysis on forms. It very quickly gets you to where your biggest issues are, where people are struggling. And so therefore you can, again, uh, look at the form, develop your hypotheses for improvement. The final thing I'm gonna look at today is field level segmentation. It's really important to look at all your data on an individual field level so you can go look at what's going on uh, there. And what we do is we look at it against different audiences. Uh, as an example here, uh, you know, it's, it's a very common thing we do. We look at device type. Um, so you, but you can do this for, for any, anything else, operating system, browser, um, traffic source, anything that might be pertinent. So what we can see in this case uh, is we're looking at abandoned rates so the percentage of people who drop out on a particular question uh, who do interact with it. Uh, and what we can see here is we have this is an e-commerce checkout and we've got uh, the fields down the left and we're looking here at the gift voucher apply button. So the button that people click once they enter a, a discount code on an e-commerce checkout. And what we can see here is if we look at the abandonment rate for mobile, it's 22% basically, um, whereas it's just over 15% for desktop users. So wherever there is a big difference in this metric, you can be sure there's a potential issue with uh, with one of your audiences. So in this case, it's mobile. And, and, and in this particular case, what, what, what was going on was um, it's a discount code. So when people were getting uh, an error messages that their codes weren't accepted. Um, on desktop, it's much easier for someone to open up a new window, go searching for a code, find it, come back, copy, paste and do it. So they were more likely to be successful in finding a code. Whereas on mobile, it's a much more fiddly experience to try and even you know, change the, the, the window, search, copy, paste, all that sort of stuff. So people were uh, dropping out at a higher rate there. So it was a clear uh, UX issue uh, for mobile uh, for this particular field. But this principle holds across anything. You know, It's a very good way to, to very quickly see if you've got a UX issue with a field on for any particular um, uh, audience, so you know, browser, uh, operating system, as well as, as traffic source or, or or any others. Or if you're looking at A/B tests, you can do it versus that. So you you can quickly identify is there a UX issue on this particular drop down on a browser because actually you, you suddenly see a big uh, a spike in abandonment rate for a particular browser. You can then go in, properly test it, see what's going on, uh, and help you develop hypotheses to fix those issues you would not find if you were just looking at the averages uh, uh, overall. So, conscious of time, gone through uh, some of the basics and some of the more advanced techniques we use um, when we're looking at form optimization and, and which metrics and which, which uh, uh, methods of analysis we would want to use. If you want to hear more about this, We've published a white paper, which you can download for free. Don't need to leave your details. You can get it at this link or just find it on, on the Zuko website. If you want to discuss again in more detail, feel free to contact me. Probably the easiest way is on LinkedIn. If we're not already connected, feel free to reach out or drop me an email at this address. Um, and we can discuss forms all day. I'm happy to do that. So uh, that is the presentation. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I'll leave you now, but happy optimizing. This is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. Every week we share interviews with and conference sessions by our favorite conversion rate optimizers from around the world. So if you like this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing.